So we are done with, so we start with S block element. We have looked at uh, periodicity. We've also looked at uh, period three elements. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we start with a S block element. This should be our third lecture, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. This is our third lecture. So I hope you have been visiting the LMS because I've been posting the lecture notes and the video there. So always try and check at the end of the lecture. So we start with S block elements. And the S block element here, we are going to look at group one and group two, but today we are going to start with group one. And for our group one, we have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. So these are group one elements. So these are, I, want, I wanted to be sure that I was recording. So these are group one elements. And um, if we look at the periodic table, we see that hydrogen most times is usually put on the same period with group one element. But hydrogen is not a group one element, although it's the first element. Although it's the first element in the periodic table and usually placed in, uh, in the same group with group one. So the actual first element of your group group one is your lithium. Your lithium is actually the first element. Now, why is hydrogen placed in the same group with your group one element? Because of the electronic configuration of your hydrogen, we know that it has one S1. So it actually behaves like the group one metals. Why? Because it can lose this one electron to become your hydrogen ion or it can even behave like the halogens. So your hydrogen behaves like group one element, and sometimes it can also behave like your group seven element, that is the halogens, by getting one electron and it becomes a hydride. So it can form your hydrogen ion, or it can form your hydride. Hydrogen ion behaving like a group one element, hydride ion behaving like your halogen. Now we'll look at the electronic configuration. The same, you already, the, please note the symbols. We have your, your, from your lithium to your francium. And for the electronic configuration, they all have one valence electron, but the energy levels are different. Your lithium electronic configuration is your helium completely filled to S1. For your sodium is your neon completely filled 3S1. So the energy levels are different, but they still have one valence electron in their outermost shell. And for the ionization energy, the ionization energy for your group one element reduce, reduces down the group. Why? Because of increase in shielding effect. And, they, and they also, we also have the atomic radius increases. What other reason? Nuclear pool decreases. So these are some of the reasons why your ionization energy decreases down the group. Because as you go down the group, the shells are becoming bigger. And as the shells are becoming bigger, the nuclear pool is reducing. As the nuclear pool is reducing, what it means is that you don't actually need more energy, much energy to remove the valence electrons. So that is why your ionization energy reduces down the group. Then the melting point, melting and boiling point reduces down the group. Why? Because your lithium is closest to, the, uh, nucle uh, to your uh, nucleus, so it's held tightly to the nucleus. That is why your lithium has the highest melting and boiling point. Though it's less metallic, but because it's closer to the nucleus, so what it means is that the forces holding it together are very strong. So your melting point for your group one element decreases down the group, likewise the boiling point. The ionic radius, of course, increases down the group because the distance 
is actually increasing. The atoms are getting bigger. Now, your group one elements are highly reactive. Because they are highly reactive, you hardly see them in their pure state. Because they are highly reactive, they can combine with air. So most of them occur as oxosalt. So they are highly reactive, so it's very difficult to find them in their pure form. And because they are not found in their pure form, there is need to purify them. And one method that is used in purification in getting them in their pure form is electrolysis. We are not going to go into deep in electrolysis. So we look at the group one element generally. For your group one elements, starting from lithium to francium, they are all metals and form ionic bonds. They form ionic bonds with more electronegative element, which we are going to come across later. They are all metals, so they are good reducing agent. Non-metals are more or are good oxidizing agent. They are highly electropositive. They are very reactive. As I've told you, they are very reactive, so they are not found in their pure state. And reactivity increases down the group. Reactivity increases down the group because of increase in shielding effects decrease in nuclear pool or nuclear charge, then reactivity increases down the group. They don't occur in their free state. So because of this, they can occur as chlorides, they can occur as nitrate, sulfate, carbonates. And most of these are usually oxo salt. Now lithium is among your group one metals or elements but it's not typically a group one element because of its small size and high charge. And this is not only typical with lithium, most element, most of the group element, the first element in that group usually show dissimilarity. They are not similar to the element in their group because of this same small size and high charge. Because they have small size and high charge, they usually have high polarizing power. So lithium is not completely typical of your group one element because of its size and charge. So. I started again. Okay. So because of its small size and charge, and this actually is why your lithium will have some anomalous behavior. Anomalous, it's not, a, it's not normal. So lithium show anomalous behavior due to its small size, that is small ionic size and high charge. And also because of the polarizing power of lithium ion. So among your group one elements, your lithium has the highest polarizing power. When we talk about polarizing power, what do you mean? That is, it refers to an atom ability to pull an electron towards itself. And when this happens, the element then polarizes the atom that the electron comes from. So that is actually what we mean by polarizing power. So lithium has a high polarizing power due to a small size. And your lithium forms more of covalent compounds than ionic unlike the group one element. Your lithium is hard. That is why it has high melting and boiling point. It has high electronegativity. So electronegativity of your group one element reduces down the group high ionization potential because it's closer to the nucleus, high melting as well as high boiling point. And it forms a stable hydride and your lithium is the only group one element that forms a nitride. It's the only group one element that forms a nitride. So we have our lithium nitride. 
So let's look at some of the reactions of your group one element. First, we have reaction with oxygen. So your group one elements all react with uh, oxygen. And when they react with oxygen, they form ionic oxide. Ionic because the difference in electronegativity between these metal and the oxygen is high. So that is actually what leads to formation of ionic oxides. So your sodium reacting with oxygen will form your sodium oxide. This is a normal oxide with oxygen in oxidation state of minus two. You can also have your sodium forming your peroxide when you have excess of oxygen. That peroxide is when your oxygen is in oxidation state of minus one. Now, this oxide that are formed can actually dissolve in water to form your alkaline solution, your sodium hydroxide. So your group one metals, example, your sodium can react with oxygen to form the normal oxide, and your sodium can also form your peroxide. And when these oxides react with water, they can form sodium hydroxide. And your lithium oxidizes less rapidly than the other metals. Now, your group one metals form different types of oxides. So we can have the normal oxide, we can, they can form the peroxide and they can form the superoxide. But it will not depend on the position of the metal in the periodic table. The metals higher up usually form more of normal oxide, just like your lithium and sodium. The metals lower, we form more of peroxide and superoxide. Please, it's very, very important for you to note this. So lithium and sodium form simple oxide, which contain oxygen in oxidation state of minus two. So this is your lithium and your sodium oxide, the normal oxide. Your sodium, from what I told you, the last can also form peroxide. So your sodium, and to some extent, your potassium will form your peroxide. Um, oxygen in oxidation state of minus one. Why your superoxide, the elements lower down, your potassium, your rubidium, your cesium, we form more of superoxide with oxygen in oxidation state of minus half. Please, superoxide is minus half. I will correct it before I send the slide. So that is the types of oxide that is formed by your group one elements. The formation of more complicated oxide, that is the peroxide and superoxide from the metals, releases, releases more energy and makes the system more energetically stable. So invariably, the peroxide and the superoxide, when they are formed, an enormous amount of energy is released. And because these energies are released, it actually leads to the system being more stable. You say this is true for the metals in the lower half of the group. That I've told you that elements that form more of the peroxide and the superoxide are the elements lower than the group. So the lower the elements in the group, the more the peroxide and superoxide they form. Why the ones higher will form more of normal oxide. At the top of the group, the small ions with a higher charge density tend to polarize the more complicated oxide ions to the point of destruction. Therefore, they form simple oxide. This is actually the reason why your lithium will form more of simple or normal oxide because they have high charge density. I told you that lithium has a small size and a high charge. And because of this, it has a very high polarizing power. And for polarizing power, when it polarize, when it attracts the atom, what happens is that it now polarizes the atom from which the electron comes from. So that is actually what we mean by the small ions with a higher charge density tend to polarize the more complicated oxide ions to the point of destruction. Therefore, they form simple oxide. So because of the polarizing power. <coughs> reaction with water. So with the exception of lithium, which reacts slowly, group one metals react violently with water. 
to give corresponding hydroxide and liberate hydrogen gas. Sorry about that. Somebody was on my bed. So your uh, group one metals, aside reacting with oxygen to form oxide, and the oxide can now the oxide form can now react with water to form hydroxide. The metals themselves can also react with water directly to form hydrox to form alkaline solution with a liberation of hydrogen gas. And the hydroxides formed by group one metals are strong bases and they are usually very soluble in water, except your lithium hydroxide. Your lithium hydroxide is slightly soluble in water. Your lithium and your lithium hydroxide will be more soluble in non-polar solvent and not polar solvent. Now the compounds. They are usually ionic. The metals form positive ions, while the hydrogen forms the negative ions. So when they form their compound, the, invariably, the metal forms positive ions, while the hydrogen forms the negative ion. The hydrides are very reactive. The hydrides are very reactive. And when they react with water, they usually give off hydrogen, forming the hydroxide. And among the group one hydrides, your lithium hydride is a very strong reducing agent. And this is usually found in organic chemistry. You actually use your lithium aluminum hydride. I'm sure most of you have, must have come across your lithium aluminum hydride in your organic chemistry. You actually use it to reduce amides to amine. So your lithium aluminum hydride is a very strong reducing agent. Now, halides, your group one halides, that means your group one element can also react with uh, halogens and that is the, that leads to the formation of halides. The halogens such as your fluorine, your chlorine, your bromine, and your iodine. When they react with these halogens, that is when they form halides. So they can form fluorides, chlorides, bromides, and iodides. And they are usually soluble in water. Your HCl, which is the halide of your chlorine, your HCl of course is a halide, that is the reaction between your hydrogen and chlorine to form the halide can actually be prepared by reaction of your H2SO4 and your sodium chloride. So your hydrohalic acid such as HCl can be prepared by reacting the corresponding metal such as sodium chloride with a strong acid such as sulfuric acid. Now, those are the reactions of your group one element. That is, the, for they react with oxygen to form the oxides. They react with water to form hydroxides. They react with hydrogen to form hydrides. They react with halogens to form halides. Now, having looked at their reactions, let's now look at what we mean by formation of oxosalts. As I already told you, most of these group one elements, they are very, very reactive. So most times they are not found in their free state. Most of them are found as oxosalts, like your carbonates, your bicarbonate, nitrate, nitrite, sulfate, sulfides. And when we talk about oxosalts, they're actually salts that contain oxygen as the only anion they contain oxygen as the only 
anion in that salt. That, so that is actually what you mean by oxo salt. An oxo salt formed by a group one element include the carbonates, the bicarbonates, the nitrates, the nitrites, sulfates, and sulfides. So look at the group one carbonates. The alkali metals form carbonates of the general formula, M2CO3. And the carbonates are usually solid at room temperature. They are solid at room temperature. The carbonates are usually ionic. And uh, what happens down the group? is that ionic nature increases because as we go down the group, what happens is that size increases, polarizing power decreases because the more the size, the smaller the charge. And the smaller the charge, the lower the polarizing power. So down the group size increases, polarizing power decreases, and ionic nature increases down the group. I started again. Sorry. Okay. So then the group size increases, polarizing power decreases, and ionic nature increases. The group one metals are the only metals that form solid carbonate. Please note this. The group two metals, when we get there, they, their carbonate are usually liquid. So the group one metals are the only metals that form solid bicarbonate. But we have an exception. Exception among the group one carbonate are usually the lithium hydrogen carbonate. Your lithium hydrogen carbonate exists only in solution. So among the group one carbonate, your lithium hydrogen carbonate is a solution. Why the other carbonate and their hydrogen carbonate are usually solid. So your group one carbonate are solid. Your group one hydrogen carbonate are solid. The only exception is your lithium hydrogen carbonate, which exists in solution. But your lithium carbonate is solid. And the hydrogen carbonate, when they decompose, they decompose into the carbonate, the water, and the CO2. Unlike the carbonate, when they decompose, they decompose into CO2 and the oxide. So note the difference in the composition of your carbonate and your hydrogen carbonate. For the sodium, for the hydrogen carbonate, they will decompose into the carbonate, water, and CO2. But for the carbonate, they will decompose into the oxide and the CO2, except for your lithium carbonate. Your lithium carbonate will decompose into, your lithium carbonate will also decompose into the carbonate, into the oxide the oxide and oxygen. But your lithium hydrogen, your lithium carbonate does not de decompose easily. Others will decompose for temperature up to 1000 degrees Celsius. But your lithium carbonate will decompose less than temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius because your lithium carbonate is not as stable as the oxide. The oxide is more stable. So once you heat up your lithium carbonate, easily it decomposes into the oxide. And this is one test for carbonate in qualitative analysis. So when you heat up either your carbonate or your hydrogen carbonate, we are sure we are going to get off our CO2 gas. So this is one way of testing for carbonates in the laboratory. And for the carbonate, your hydrogen carbonate, your sodium hydrogen carbonate is used as a washing soda. This is one uses of your carbonate. And also the ease with which your hydrogen carbonate, that is your sodium hydrogen carbonate, give off carbon dioxide is 
made of in fire extinguishers and baking powder. So this is one uses of your sodium hydrogen carbonate. So because when you heat your sodium hydrogen carbonate, it can easily give off your carbon dioxide. That is why it's actually used in fire extinguishers and also as a baking powder. Now we look at the thermal stability of your carbonates. The group one carbonate, as I told you, they are very, very stable, up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. And do you agree with me that this is a very high temperature? And when they decompose, they decompose into carbon dioxide and the oxide on heating. But your potassium, rubidium, and cesium carbonate are deliquescent. What it means is that they can absorb water when left in the atmosphere. And thermal stability increases than the group as size of the metal increases. Thermal stability, you can actually explain it based on the size and the charge and polarizing power. So small and highly charged metal ions possess high polarizing power, just like your lithium, while large and small charged metal ions, as we go down the group, possesses low polarizing power. So the lower the polarizing power, the more ionic and the more stable the carbonates. So your lithium carbonate, as I said, is not stable. And that is why your lithium carbonate does not need a temperature of 1,000 degrees Celsius for it to decompose into its oxide and the CO2. Because of the small size of your lithium, because of the small size of your lithium, so your lithium has a high polarizing power and the stable lattice of your lithium oxide than your lithium carbonate. So your lithium oxide is more stable than your lithium carbonate. And this is because of the small size of your lithium. Now we look at the solubility of the carbonate. They are ionic. So we expect them to be soluble in water. Except, of course, your lithium carbonate, which is more covalent than being ionic. And solubility in water increases from lithium to cesium. So as we go down the group, there is increase in ionic character. Than the group. And as ionic character increases down the group, solubility also increases down the group because polarizing power reduces, ionic nature increases solubility increases. <laughs> so we look at the nitrate. Aside the carbonate, we now look at the nitrate and the nitrite. Please, can you mute yourself? <coughs> Please mute yourself. Or I will remove you from this class if you don't mute yourself. Thank you. So for the nitrates and the nitrites, the common nitrates and the nitrites are your sodium nitrates and your sodium nitrite. Nitrate is your NO3, while your nitrite is your NO2. Note the difference. And your sodium nitrate can actually be produced by reacting your nitric acid with your sodium carbonate. So neutralizing nitric acid with sodium carbonate will actually give us our nitrate salt, our sodium nitrate. And your sodium nitrate is a very important chemical that is used as fertilizer. And in terms of solubility, all nitrates and nitrites are soluble. So they are soluble in water and solubility also increases than the group. Likewise, thermal stability, because as we go down the group, ionic nature increases, solubility increases, and thermal stability increases. Now, when you heat your nitrate, it gives you your nitrite with oxygen giving off. So heating of your nitrate will give you your nitrite with elimination of air, oxygen gas. And your sodium nitrite 
is used in manufacture of dyes and as an antioxidant in food stuff. So it, when you talk about an antioxidant, it makes the food not to spoil easily. So your nitrite, especially your example, your sodium nitrite is used in manufacture of dyes and as an antioxidant in food stuffs. Now, the composition of your nitrite, of your nitrates, gives you your nitrites for group one element. But the composition of your lithium nitrates will give you the oxide. Please note the difference. You see that your lithium, even in terms, in, in terms of their compound, will behave differently from the other group one element. The composition of your group one nitrate will give you a nitrite and oxygen. But the composition of your lithium nitrate will give you the oxide, your NO2, and oxygen is given off. So you can actually get your NO2 from your lithium nitrate, not from the other nitrate salts, not the other group one nitrate salt. So we'll also look at the sulfates the hydrogen sulfates. So your group one elements also form the sulfates and the hydrogen sulfates, and they are all soluble in water, just like the nitrates and the nitrites. For your sulfates, for your sulfites, sorry, the sulfites are more reactive than the sulfate. Of course, your sulfite is your SO3. Reaction of our SO3 plus oxygen will give us our SO4. So that is why your sulfite is more reactive than your sulfate. Your sulfite is SO3, while your sulfate is your SO4. So the sulfite can react further to form your sulfate. And on heating your sulfite with acid, we actually liberate your SO2 gas. So that is why during your qualitative, your qualitative analysis, when you do your dry heating and you're not liberating any gas, we always ask you to add either dilute HCl or conk H2SO4. Because as we have seen, most of these oxo salts are stable to heat. So most times liberating these gases from this oxo salt are usually very, very difficult. So that is why you are always asked to add some, you ask, add either dilute HCl or concave to SO4. So on adding HCl to your sodium sulfate, sulfite, you actually get your SO2 plus your sodium chloride and water. And your sodium sulfite can actually react with your sulfur to form your sodium tau sulfate. And your sodium tau sulfate is a very important chemical in photography. Is very useful in photography and in iodine titrations. So your sulfite will actually react further, either with oxygen, with sulfur, to form more compounds. Unlike your SO4, which is not reactive. Your sulfite, your SO3 is more reactive, and that is what we are seeing here. Your sulfite reacting with a sulfur. So we've looked at your group one element and we've looked at some uses of your group one element, like your sodium tau sulfate, which is used in a photography. The nitrates are used as antioxidants, your nitrites. You also have your sodium nitrates as fertilizer. So these are some of the uses of your group one element. And more uses, we look at our lithium. Lithium is usually used in the batteries. Your lithium is small, but it has a long lifetime battery use, especially they have a long lifetime batteries for your lithium. And your lithium hydride are reducing agent, as I already told you, they are used in reduction of, when we looked at lithium, 
the lithium hydride, where we say that it is known for reducing amides to amines. So your lithium hydride can actually be used as a reducing agent. Sodium is also used as a reducing agent. Generally, most of your group one elements are used as reducing agents. So sodium can combine with other metals to form alloys. So that is one other importance of your group one element, they can form alloys. And your potassium is used in the production of potassium oxide, which you use for oxygen generators. So these are some of the uses of your group one element. In addition to the ones we have mentioned why the lecture was going on. Any question? Question time. Hello. Question time. Hi. Hi. Question time. Hello, good afternoon. Ma. Afternoon there. Regarding the carbonism. Okay. I saw that, I think we said when the carbon is heated, it gives off carbon dioxide. Yes. So my question is, is the fire outbreak now? And if I yes. as in the fire outbreak. Yes. And we, we make use of fire extinguisher. Is it the yes. carbon that that is giving off that extinguisher? Yeah, that, yeah the that, fire? that extinguishes the fire. Okay. So Thank that you, is what, yes, is that, that, is, uh, that is why even your sodium hydrogen carbonate, it is that CO2 that is given off. So that is why it's okay. been used, is the CO2 that is given off. Yes. Thank you. Any other question? Question time. Because it says the ease with which hydrogen carbonate give off carbon dioxide is made rich of in fire extinguishers and baking powder. You know that even your sodium carbonate will give off uh, carbon dioxide. I hope we know that. Yes, sir. Uh, but this one will give off this, the ease. This, this will give off carbon dioxide easier than your sodium carbonate. So that is why your sodium hydrogen carbonate is used in fire extinguishers and baking powder. Because your sodium carbonate will also give off CO2. But the ease with which this will give off the CO2, that is why it is used in fire extinguishers and baking powders. Any other question? Are we good with the lecture? Are we uh, good with the lecture? Yes, ma'am. OK, so we'll see on Wednesday. What time is our lecture on Wednesday? Yes, ma'am. Our lecture on Wednesday is 10 to 11. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. So, so we'll see on Wednesday. Yes? Somebody's asking yes, a question. OK. There's a question. OK. There's a question there. OK. So, um, is it because lithium reacts slowly that it is used to form lifelong batteries or something? Like that? Oh, sorry. Is it because of lithium slow reaction that is used to form um, long lasting batteries? No, 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 no. It's not because of the. What did you say? Because of the what? React slowly. Slow reaction. No, 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 no. Most times, the uh, lithium say. A property comes from its small size and its high polarizing power. That is why lithium will behave differently from the other elements. So it's not, be yes, it's not because of that. And uh, there's something I wanted to just escape me. Don't worry. Any other question? Gentlemen, what do you mean by high polarizing power? Okay, when I say mm -hmm. high polarizing power, exactly. what I mean is, um, 
lithium now lithium is small the size is small and it has a high charge understand when we say size and charge as we go down the group what happens is that the size increases isn't it but the charge reduces but lithium the size of the, of lithium is small so the charge of lithium is high and because the charge is high polarizing power has to do with the ability of the element to pull electrons to itself so because it has a high charge it will be able to pull more electrons to itself so and as it pulls electrons to itself because it's pulling electrons from another element it will now polarize the atom from where the electron is coming from so that so your lithium because of the small size and it has a high charge so it will have a high polarizing power ma hmm? ma you said um when you heat nitrates you get um nitrites right yes yes and also you said when you decompose nitrate it gives you um oxygen and nitrite yes okay. yes yes when you this okay. is your nitrate when you hit nitrate you get your nitrite and when you hit uh, when you most times when you hit your nitrite you get your nitrate so it's vice versa but okay. for your lithium for your lithium nitrate you are going to get the oxide okay ma does um having lower polarizing power makes an element more ionic yes the less polarizing power the more ionic that is why as we go down the group what happens is as size increases the charge is now small and because the size is small the polarizing power is small and the lower the polarizing power the more ionic so that is so your your lithium is is less ionic it's more covalent and it's okay, more thank you. it has a high polarizing power okay Well, I thought all the four elements have plus one as their ion charge. I thought all the four elements have plus one. Like what this high charge and low charge and this one series. Because, <laughs> you know that what I mean is that your lithium, because it's closer to the nucleus, the size is small, <clears throat> and because the size is small, it has the charge is higher. on like the all as you go down the group the size is large but the charge is small and that is why is because of the high charge of your lithium that is why your lithium can actually form complex on like the other group one element they don't form complex okay excuse me ma yes there ma please how do you form lithium nitride Since when it decomposes lithium nitrate, it gives you oxide instead of nitrite. So how do you form the nitrite? How do you form lithium nitrite? Lithium nitrite. This is lithium nitrite. This is your lithium nitrite. Nitrate. I thought that was nitrate. This is your lithium nitrate. Yes, ma'am. This is your lithium nitrate. Okay, my please how do you form the nitrite? Your lithium nitrite can actually be formed when you now react where it will depend on what you mean by forming your lithium nitrite. Because formation of your nitrite comes from the nitrates. When you decompose your nitrates, it forms your nitrite. But your lithium because it behaves differently from others it will not easily form the nitrite i will still check but i can't actually see the lithium nitrite now okay so but you. i know the the lithium nitrate when it decomposes it will form the oxide but for the other group one element from your nitrate you can get your nitrite and from your nitrite you can get you can form your nitrate that is for the others okay ma thank you ma so i'm still waiting our time is still on 
Ma, is um, thermal stability related to melting point? Yes. Once, if, if, the, if the compound is very stable, of course, the melting point and boiling point will be very high. Okay. Yes. And thermal stability, you can also relate it to ionic nature. The more ionic, the more stable. It's like your sodium chloride. Your sodium, you know that the ion is an ionic bond. So breaking it will be very, very high. Yes. Unlike if it's a covalent bond. Uh -huh. So thermal stability you can also okay. relate it to ionic nature of the compound. Okay, thank you. So Ma, also, which um, elements in group one form peroxide? Because you said they want higher up, like yes, lithium like and your, sodium, they lithium, form simple oxide. They sound simple oxide. Your, uh, even your sodium, to, uh, to some extent, your sodium can also form peroxide and your potassium. Your potassium, okay. your sodium can form peroxide. Why the other ones lower can form super oxide. Super oxide. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that is it. So you see your lithium, your sodium will form the normal oxide. Your sodium too, to some extent, can form because it's still a little bit high up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, ma. Yes. Ma, can you show the slide where um, where you have oxo salts? Oxo salts. Okay. These are oxo salts. Which, what what question do you want to ask? These are oxo salt, carbonate, bicarbonate, nitrate, nitrite, sulfate, and sulfur. You see that all of them have oxygen. So what do you want? So that so I don't know the slide you are talking about. I just want to see the, the compound on that. Is. This is your carbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate. This is your sodium carbonate. This is the lithium. This is your nitrate. This is your sulfite. This is SO4 sulfate. Mm -hmm. So have you seen them? So we have your carbonate, your sulfite, your nitrate, your nitrite. So those are the oxo salts. So carbonate, bicarbonate, that is uh, hydrogen carbonate, nitrate, nitrite, sulfate, SO4, sulfite, SO3. So those are the oxo salts. You should have this, carbon, the hydrogen carbonate, the carbonate. The nitrates to give you the nitrite, the sulfites, the sulfites. Uh, so that, those are the oxo salts. So are we good? <laughs> In the absence, in the absence of more questions, so we meet on Wednesday. Okay, ma. So I'll put the slide and the okay, recording on the LMS. Ma. Yes. Ma, wait, ma, can I ask a question? Okay, you can. Sorry, ask. ma. Okay. Um, um, for group, for group one um element, why is it that shielding effect doesn't affect the boiling and melting points as compared to group two? I'm coming. Let me let me put up the slide. Okay, ma. You said okay. I asked that. Hey, I want to bring the slide of the. Uh, okay, you said uh What oh, is no, your question? Sorry, sorry ma, I wanted to ask, why is it that group one elements, the, mel 
the melting point and boiling point of group one elements, why is it that shielding effect doesn't affect it as compared to group two elements? Why shielding effect does not affect? Why shielding effect doesn't affect it as compared to group? Yeah, the melting and boiling points. What is the melting and boiling point of your group or group of your group two elements? Are they higher than group one or lower? Oh. Hmm? It seems to steadily move. It's normal. Like the, there's no variation. There's no odd anomaly that causes it to variate in, in, that, that causes it to have like invariability. Like you see, one eighty one ninety eight six fifty eight nine twenty nine. It seems to be increasing, decreasing steadily downward. But when you go to okay. the elements, you see that it has like invariability. Yes. Yes. Lower yes. yes. Because yeah. your group two, your group two elements where you have your beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, most of them has to do with the structure. It has to do with the structure of the element. Yes, your group two elements. You don't have this particular trend because it has to do with the structure of the elements. The ones that are tightly bound, we have higher melting and boiling point, but the ones that are not tightly bound, we have, so it, there's no uh, this particular trend in your group two elements. Yes, you are right. Because of the structure of the, the, the way the, the elements are being packed. They are uh, uh, lattice structure. The way their structure is being the compound, the way their structure is. Are we are we okay with this one? And remember that your francium among your group one element is radioactive. Your francium is radioactive among your group one element. I think I missed that out. So we we'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.